want to live your best possible life? Do you want to live a life full of joy and happiness and fulfillment? I suggest you work with your higher self. When you work with your higher self, you are working with creating reality consciously. You're working with your universal self to create what serves your highest good in this third dimension. If you reach out to your higher self, say, hey, higher self, I really want to figure out what I need to figure out to get on my best path. Or I really need to learn my lessons. Will you help me? I'm ready. I'm ready to face my fears. I'm ready to get out of my comfort zone and do something that is scary, but also breathtaking, right? So don't let your fears control you. If you work with your higher self, you realize the angels, your guides, they're behind every decision you do, everything you put your belief into. If you believe in yourself, trust me, bro, the entire universe believes in you too. If you say, I'm gonna do this and I'm never gonna quit, they're gonna be like, I'm gonna give you everything you need. So smile, trust yourself, and have a great day. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Cryptic Conversations. I'm your host, Tunes from the Crypt. We have another very special episode in store for you today. Today's guest is Orion Huntley, a spiritual healer, former military member, and one of the founders of Soulful Rise Healing, an online crystal and spiritual art store. After undergoing a profound spiritual awakening, Orion realized the military was not aligned with his highest timeline, so he left his old life behind to pursue a healing journey. He started working with the chakras, explored shamanism, and connected with his higher self. Currently living a nomadic lifestyle with his girlfriend, Orion is on a mission to help others heal their past traumas and reconnect with their higher selves. So welcome to the show. So to, to kick off the show, you know, I just wanted to say, I wanted to give you a compliment on your video because that's how I found you, right? I, I thought the way, the way that you explained trauma was the way you explained it you explained it very well uh, i'm sure you could do it a lot better than i could but right. essentially what he was talking about was you know how we all have traumas in life right but even beyond the traumas that we have in our life you also have ancestral traumas and you have past life traumas so go ahead and, and explain explain a little bit more about that so i can dive right into that for you when i first started my spiritual journey I was a complete atheist. I thought there was no magic in the world. I thought people that use crystals were like stupid. Uh, I thought there was absolutely nothing besides science. Skipping to my first experience of like past lives and how that's important. Like me being a toxic masculine man blocked me from even connecting to like my spiritual side. And part of my toxic masculine ancestry was through the military. Uh, when I started in the military, uh, like I always wanted to be a good person, but I didn't really have good people to teach me. Right. The other people I was working with, they're like, yo, we like to re get really drunk. We like to talk about women. We talk, we like to be like crazy, not conscious people. And so when I first grew up, I thought that was awesome. Go for it. Do you have something to say? No, go ahead. Okay. Uh okay. And so I tried to fit in with that. And I tried to fit in with my other friends that had these spiritual beliefs that were just very low vibrational. When I had my first past life experience that like really changed my reality, that was with the military. So I was really trying to get out of the military at the very end because the people I was working with, they were treating me badly. Uh, they, let's say I was, doing my thing and they just didn't like me they just didn't like my thing so i wanted to get out of there and i started working with like kali ma energy i started working with death and rebirth and i started seeing like angel numbers and i started knowing that something inside me was changing and then when i had this like feeling and this energy I, I did a meditation and it was like i was like crashing through like a windshield, like I crashed through, like I experienced a death, right? I was crashing through a helicopter in my past life experience and my body was not recovered. He was just stuck. He, he was stuck in his uniform. He was stuck dead. He was stuck angry. He was stuck separated from his true essence. And for me to dive back there and dig that up, I had to kind of like replay that through my whole life. And it wasn't just my trauma. My dad was in the military. My grandfather's in the military. A lot of people on the planet right now are still joining the military. They're still joining. And I things that might not be serving their highest good from a soul perspective. But, you know, 
everything serves your highest good because it gets you where you need to be, right? Yeah, does that yeah. make sense? Is that yeah, good? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that's awesome. I like the way I like your mindset, you know, you know, and I can agree with you too. you know, being a, you know, a young man growing up, you know, like I said, you know, I, I've always felt different too. like, you know, the guys all they care about is drinking and, and talking about girls and fighting. And it was funny, actually, I was, I was at a Starbucks the other day, and I was listening, <laughs> I was listening to these guys just talking next to me. And it was like, it, you know, it was, it was these two Asian guys just like at a Starbucks, and all they were talking about was sports, like, you know, like, just they knew everything about the game going on. It was like, Oh, so-and-so got traded and this and that. And they're just that, like, that's their whole conversation. I was there for like two, three, two, three hours. And that's all they were talking about. And it's like, it's like, you know, I don't want to shame them or anything. They, they just don't know any better. And, and I can agree that's with what you. They exist at, you know, Yeah, and I can and agree with what, you too. Mm, yeah. How they exchange I, energy with each other and how they have an identity is with that. Yeah. And I can agree with you as well in regards to the military, um, you know, my dad was in Vietnam, actually. So he's a little bit older. He was in Vietnam and he he always I, I saw the PTSD from the war and, and how it affected him. And and he's always raised me being anti-war. You know, it just like it really it really messed him up. You know, it really I see the emotions in him. You know, he and he didn't even want to be there. He got drafted. You know, he he was mm -hmm. forced, he was forced to go there. And so I've also been just kind of anti-war. And um, yeah, so I like your mindset, you know, so. So talk to me a little bit more about that. You know, like where did you grow up and go to school and, and when did you join so, the military? I'm from Yankton, South Dakota. It's a small town. It's right on the Missouri River. Uh, I went to school in Yankton and I joined the military right when I was 17. So I joined the military. I joined the Iowa Air National Guard. That's just an hour away from where I lived. That's where I drilled. That's the base I went to. And I joined the military so young because I knew I needed it to pay for college. So my dream was, ever since I was a little boy, really, was to join the National Guard, get free college, become a pilot, and then just be in the Air Force forever. Uh, when I realized, like, so that was just where I came from. There's any, I could go a lot of directions from there, honestly. Yeah, so so what was the pivotal moment, like, that really, like, where you were like, you know what, I need to get out of, out of the military, and, and what really stimulated your spiritual awakening? Okay, so when I was a kid, the military, me being a soldier, being an airman, that was my identity. Like, when I was a little boy, my Roblox character, right, is still in full camouflage with face paint on. Like, when I was going to war ever since I was a little boy. And ever since I was a kid, I literally had something in my back of my mind. I need a weapon. I need a weapon. And it's like, why do I now, like, I was like, why do I need a weapon? I'm in school. I don't need a weapon. But like taking that in and growing up with that, knowing that I'm going to join the military. My dad's in the military. I'm so supported to join the military. And then you join the military and you're like, I'm finally here. You go through basic training, become an airman. It's your proudest moment. You're like, yes, I'm serving my country. I'm honorable. I have excellence. I have integrity. And then that was my identity it was this excellence this integrity and i carried that with me that was really in alignment with me the core values of the air force was also in line with my core values and that stopped when we got to the coronavirus and there was not excellence there was not integrity there was my chain of command everyone was saying i don't want to get this shot this is a bull this is whatever my beliefs are i don't want to get it but i have to get it anyway because my chain of command says so and then I was like, no, yo, I'm the creator of my reality. I'm not going to take that. It's wrong. It is wrong. What my government is doing is wrong. Forcing people to get vaccines that they don't want to take is wrong. Forcing people to get vaccines for a disease that isn't deadly. You know, it is deadly, but it's not like if you're a healthy person, it's not ridiculously deadly. You don't need that. It shouldn't be forced upon you, you know. And the fact that the vaccines weren't even proven to be efficient or safe in the first place. And I was like, so the government knows the vaccines aren't safe and it's giving, it's forcing its military to take it. So I was like, wow, my government doesn't give a damn about me. And I was like, wow, my chain of command, they all agree with me. They all say, Huntley, we agree with your beliefs, but we're not going to do it. We can't, you'll, you're on your own. So that's what I did. I wrote on my piece of paper, I got a religious accommodation. I said, what my chain of command is doing is wrong. What my government is doing is wrong. Uh, I have a religious, I have a conscious objection to taking this. My body is a temple. 
uh, I'm not going to have something in it that is not. No, I would rather leave the Air Force than do something. It's not just like one vaccine. It's the fact that what they're doing is wrong. So after I wrote all of that out, uh, I was I was expecting to get kicked out of the military, but I was driving my butt home. I was driving home from drill. And I I felt good. I was just smiling. And like I literally felt something like warm in the middle of my forehead. And I was like, wow, that's that's weird. And I was driving home. I was just like a block from my house. First time in my life, a voice pops in my head. It says, I'm God. And I was like, what? I'm not God. That's crazy. If I'm God, make that dude wave at me. The dude didn't wave at me. So I was like, all right. I don't know what the heck that was. But obviously, it was just like my imagination, right? That was like my first pivotal moment that something happened from outside, right? So things kept getting weirder. I would like look at people and I would feel them. And I'd be like, holy smokes. And it kept happening. And I kept realizing I was like feeling people like I was feeling energy. I was, it was just something that I'd never experienced before. And it happened until I looked at my professor. And I think he's some, he's some spiritual dude of some kind, but he's a little bit crazy because I was in college. I look at him and my third eye just goes, yeet, it just shuts. Because like it was not supposed to be, from what, what I look at it is, it was not supposed to be open at that time. And me having my third eye exposed to someone else's, it just like closed. Because he was like the first like high vibrational person I really like felt the energy of. But after that, I was like, okay, I'm not an airman anymore. I don't have this identity to hold on to. And I have this new understanding, new perspective of reality to explore and dig into. So that's when I really started that's when the healing began because I realized there's something out there. I'm in control of my reality, but what the hell are all these feelings? Why aren't I doing what I really like? Why do I keep getting confused? Why do I keep getting distracted? Why do I keep getting hurt? Why do I keep getting drained? Why do I keep doing things I don't want to do? And that's when you, you try to unravel one thing and you realize you're raveled into everything. And that's the best way that I can explain, like starting the spiritual journey, like discovering your own spiral. Yeah, I love that. It And as you tell your story, it almost sounds like you you were already a little bit spiritual when you were in the military because you, you were saying things like my body's a temple and all that. Like It seemed like you were already spiritual a little bit. So I was. So with the coronavirus, that situation that happened about like three years into my enlistment. And by then, like I just knew there was something wrong with the vaccine. I I just had a feeling that it was going to make me sick, that it was bad for me. And that was like one of the, the, suggest, the suggested ways to word it is like to view your body as a temple because that's like an acceptable military bureaucrats would read that and it, like they wouldn't decline it right away if that makes sense. So that's why I used that verbiage. But at that time, I didn't have a seriously strong spiritual belief. Like I didn't have any of my shamanic connections. I didn't have all I had at that point in time was I think this is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I've been on my spiritual journey for the past few years and it started with uh, sobriety or it, it was a lot of things that led me to sobriety. It was like, you know, I think it was my dark night of the soul. I had a lot of traumatic experiences in my 20s, you know, a lot of a lot of things, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, rejections, car accidents. You know, I had a paranormal experience, you know, and mm -hmm. all, all of these things just made me question the rea my, my reality, you know, and it it opened me up to to more things. And so, like I said, it was sobriety, then it was therapy. And then I went to a ayahuasca retreat. And that was the thing that really, really changed me. And, you know, before, you know, after the ayahuasca retreat, it was like, I, you know, I'm always talking about it, how everybody in this life is operating from a separation consciousness you know? mm -hmm. and, exactly and, yep. and a, after my awakening it's like now it's the unity consciousness we're all one right so it's mm -hmm. like these people having these wars and all that it's like they're killing each other but it's like no dude what you do like you're, you're doing it to yourself like we're all one like so when people can have that awakening and wake up to the to the idea that we're all one then we start to realize like dude war is just it's dumb it doesn't make sense we're doing exactly. it to ourselves exactly we're being manipulated into fighting each other over resources 
that aren't even scarce. That's the craziest thing about being a nomad and traveling. I realize money literally does grow on trees. Crystals literally do come out of the earth, right? You can plant something or you can dig a mine and you can harvest it and harvest it and harvest it. You can plant trees and grow them and chop them down and grow them. People fight and kill each other over stuff that it's all greed. It isn't real scarcity. It's yeah. literally just we have the ability to use force. So no one, unless someone is out there going to use force against us to stop us, we're going to use as much force as we can because that's like like you said, service to self. That separation, I'm separate. I have power. I'm going to use it to serve myself. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So talk to us a little bit more. You know, how did working with your chakras help transform your reality? And what advice do you have for the listeners? So when working with my chakras, at first, I thought I was imagining. Like, I was just working with nothing. I, like, I knew they were there, but I wasn't completely feeling them. My very first experience with my chakras was when I just was meditating one day and I just started to see color. Like I started to see color like in my third eye, I started to see blue. And then if I really focused, I could be like green or yellow or red. And then I realized like, okay, there is something here. And just my awareness of it is what how I dug deeper into it. So just if you're meditating, clear your mind, start with nothing. Feel something. It's going to be like something new, a new sensation. And don't think about it right away. Just feel it like like watching a flower unfold, right? Don't be like, oh, wow, it's moving. Something's happening. It's like, wait for it to fully unfold. And then really like see the whole loop, see the whole picture, and then try to talk about it, then integrate it. For me, working with my third eye, is how I worked with the other ones because my third eye kept me on track. My third eye would keep me in alignment with my highest good. So then I could use my third eye to consciously work on my joy, my passion, my purpose, consciously work on my love, my self-love, consciously work on my root. And when I started working with my other chakras, because this one was kind of already open, this one opened itself and allowed me to do the rest of the work. But like diving in, like I wear diopside right now. That's where the crystals come in. Working, I found things in my environment like that synchronized with my goals of healing that ended up in the right spot at the right time. And then you start working with something because it attracts, you attract what you need. So you get a crystal that helps you open your heart. And when I opened my heart chakra, I literally like felt like, wow, there's like love inside of me. There's like love flowing in me and around me. And I feel love, not just with myself, but with that tree, and with that animal, and with other people. It's like, what? I never thought a little stone could help me do that. But like wearing it is what opened it. Wearing it is what helped me experience green, feeling green, feeling my love. So it doesn't have to necessarily be this for you, but whatever it is for you, if that makes sense. Yeah, I love that. So as we talk about, you know, the chakras and healing, talk to us more, like I said, that video that that I how I found you talk to us a little bit more about how, you know, explain to the listeners about, you know, how we have trauma in this life, you know, ancestral mm -hmm. trauma, past life trauma. So you have to understand that you can't view yourself from a three dimensional perspective. You are infinite. You are a light being. You are the entire universe in a human body, you have unlimited potential to go in any direction. But where you're going has to come, it has to decide like where you came from. So if your ancestor did something and then that ancestor like has that something get happened to them, whether it's a good thing and they pass like abundance down to their generations or they pass lack somebody gets hurt and then they weren't there and now there's trauma now there's poverty now there's anger so if you have a lot of really good energy and a lot of positivity you take love and you pass it down and the grandfather loves the son loves the grand daughter all this around them and the opposite of that is if you're born into poverty if your mother was assaulted and now you're born without a father without a stable place to live and you are already addicted to drugs before you're even before you come out of the womb. 
you can see how there's a lot of things that are completely out of your control. Your soul incarnated knowing everything that was going to happen to it. Your soul came here knowing that it's going to experience all of these things because it needs that specific growth to be the best version of itself. Your soul, once it grows to a certain level, then it's conscious of itself. Then it chooses to go in a certain direction. Then it chooses, oh, good exists. I want to be good. But until you breach consciousness, you're just going to be in your lower chakras. You're going to be in fear, anxiety. You're going to be existing in, you know, <laughs> separation from what you really want. When you have ancestral trauma, you're working through not you're working through your your like what you came here to experience through other people. You came here to experience a mother that neglected you and heal it. You came here to experience being assaulted and overcoming it. You came here to experience what it's like to have a generation after a generation after a generation and you're not here to repeat it. That is what the third dimension is. That is what the the karma, the cycle of unconsciousness is, it's just not healing your trauma. It's not learning your lesson. But if you become conscious, then you can say, I'm not going to hit my kids. I'm not going to let myself get taken advantage of. I'm not going to repeat the same patterns that were imprinted into me. And that's what I call ancestral karma, the stuff that was imprinted into you. It does not define you. Once you grow out of it, you can be whatever you want. But until, like, if you're in the victim of it, your your karma kind of becomes your identity. Yeah, I love that. So, so well explained. And ever since a kid, I always I always just understood that as well. Just ever since a kid, I was just like, this thought would always come to me. Like, the, I would observe, you know, different family structures and observe different people throughout my life and stuff. And this thought always came to me. It was like, the whole point of this life is to break the cycle. Because I see so many families out here that just repeat the cycle, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's dr drugs, alcoholism, you know, you know, abuse, different things, just repeating the cycle. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to be the one to break the cycle. And so the, the other thing on my journey was just, yeah, like learning how trauma is stored in your DNA. That was the first mm -hmm. thing. And that, that opened me up. And then, like I said, in the ayahuasca retreat, there's the concept of purging. And so I was literally throwing up and it was like all that toxicness was coming out. Mm -hmm. And it, it almost felt orgasmic, you know, like after I was getting it out, I just felt I felt good. Okay. Like, mm -hmm. like I, re I released all I released all that stuff I was holding on to stuff that I didn't even know. Like that was, wasn't even you. That wasn't even it me. Wasn't it, was even passed, you. it was passed on to me. Yeah. It's powerful stuff, man. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, Soulful Rise Healing. You know, you, you've been showing your uh, crystal here. So talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about Soulful Rise Healing. So Soulful Rise Healing, that's like my business. That's I wanted to have like a platform to like, like, ex like put the things that I found that have worked for me and are useful for me and that I can understand and explain and just put them out there for everyone. So that's like my, my business. Uh, we go to gem shows and we get crystals that are from the mines, right? You can buy crystals from China. You can buy crystals from a wholesaler or you can buy crystals from the people that mine them in Africa. You can mine. You can buy crystals from the people that ride the donkey through the jungle in Colombia. And when you buy the crystals from those local people, not only do you get like the fresh crystals from the mine, but you get like really good prices. You get to give them exchange. You get to like give them American money and they get to go and work for a season and have a whole season off. And then you get to give crystals to people that use them themselves. And you get to give them the most high vibrational crystals possible. You get to give them crystals straight from the earth and they get to use them. And let me tell you, like I've, I've held crystals that are really, really big that have like just cool and I've held crystals that are really, really small and they make me go like, holy smokes, that's crazy. Why am I shaking? So like it's really taught me so much and the different energies from the different people from their different countries, because you get to see the trauma on them, too. You get to see the people come from Madagascar wearing war on their clothes. They're all in camouflage. You get to see the people come from the Congo that, you know, you can feel the trauma and the heaviness on them. You get to see the different parts of the world and how they exist. And you don't just see it from the news. You get to see it first person from the, the their faces. You get to ask them, how's the weather across the country? And they know it's like 
it makes you feel so connected to like the lifeblood of the earth. And I found that like the crystals, there's a lot of spiritual people that like spiritual people get attracted to crystals, but all kinds of people get attracted to them. So I figured out like crystals themselves are an energy and they're one of the most freaking fantastic energies on this earth. Like the most, one of the most amazing natural resources. So I loved them. I love working with them. And when you make your job, something that you love, it really does not feel like work. So that's so for us healing. That's the crystals aspect anyways. I'd love to get into the healing too. Yeah, that's awesome. So where do you guys source the crystals? So like I said, uh, like we go to the Tucson gem show or we go to the Denver gem show and then it's like Denver's like a week and Tucson's like a month, but all the miners from across the world come to those two huge shows and they just bring all the rocks they have and they try to sell as much as they can. That's where we try to sort. We try to source everything directly from the, like get African crystals from the African peoples that mine it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. You know, I've been learning more about crystals along my journey. I'm not, I'm not an expert by any means, you know, but I've had like a, a tiger's eye bracelet and, and I, I've, I've found recently about this, this uh, stone called shungite. Do you mm. have any sh shungite? We do have shungite. Nice. So yeah. I love Shungite. You might have be talking about like its EMF properties. Yeah. But it's fantastic for grounding. It's an awesome stone. Yeah. So talk to us about some of the different crystals you sell and their benefits. Okay. So I'll start with one that's really awesome. And it's like a very spiritual stone. So I thought I had one in my pocket here. Hopefully I have one in this one. All right. All the crystals fell out of my pockets. Guess I don't need them. I'm going to start with Moldavite. So Moldavite, it's a tektite. Have you ever heard of that? Nah. It's a it's a meteorite. So it, it crashed from the sky. It it hit in Germany and then it bounced and it vaporized. And it got so hot it made all of the meteorite I actually have some in my ring right here. It made it like this clear green glass, super pure. All the other tectites on the planet, they're dark and they're like gunky, but moldavite is a jewelry grade tectite because it is so pure and so clear. It is a stone of like spiritual transformation. It's like the stone of heaven crashing into earth. It's a perfect combination of heaven and earth and exploding at like into purity. So Moldavite, I don't know, some people have seen it and read about it on TikTok. There's a lot of TikToks that say, don't buy Moldavite because it'll ruin your life. And Moldavite, what it does is it knocks out everything that's not on your highest spiritual path and knocks it out of your way. It'll knock you out of relationships. It'll knock you out of toxic workplaces. Because if you say, Moldavite, help me serve my highest good, and whether you know it or not, just wearing it is an invitation to work with it, it will start changing your reality. Because Moldavite, it's a really high consciousness stone. It's a really high vibrational stone. People can hold Moldavite and have like out-of-body experiences. People can hold Moldavite, like even my girlfriend, even me when we were picking it up. If you hold a handful of Moldavite, your heart just starts racing and you feel like a flush in your face. And it's like, wow, just holding the stone can make my body change. That's just the small aspects of how powerful it is. But it helps you get into alignment with your highest good. You can really use it to have like spiritual awakenings, like a Kundalini awakening. You could use it to connect to the, the, the central sun. You can use it to go anywhere, but it also might not do anything for you. If you're not ready, if you are not ready to let go of your beliefs, if you're not ready to let go of your old mindset, I'll just sit there. That'll just be a pretty rock. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, one last thing about Moldavite, it'll disappear. Like it'll disappear out of your pocket and reappear on your nightstand or in your bathroom or in a book somewhere that it should not be. It truly is a higher dimensional consciousness just in this is just the physical form it exists in. Yeah, I love that. So, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, it was a similar thing at my ayahuasca retreat. It was like how you just said, you know, that Moldavite, it may not do anything for you, right? Like it was the same thing at the ayahuasca retreat. It was like I remember the one lady on the second day of the retreat just looking over at her and she was so disappointed. She was upset. Like she was like looking at all of us having like th these amazing mind blowing revelations. And she was just like, nothing's happening for me. So I, I think I think that is definitely part of it on the spiritual path as well is like you have to be open and, and willing and and perhaps that'll help amplify, you know, these different effects and stuff. So 
So can you explain um can you explain how Peruvian shamanism has influenced your spiritual journey and were psychedelics involved? Okay, so psychedelics weren't actually involved with my Peruvian shamanic experiences at all. And some of my most profound spiritual experiences have been I'm laying on a table and there's a lady opening my chakras working on them or we're going through we're doing a specific like a past life regression or a soul retrieval doing a specific practice. And you just go into the soul. You literally go into a higher dimension. You go into the field, the field of infinite consciousness. And you let go of your physical body and you go for what you're healing. Like if you're having a past life regression, you might be an Arabian man. You might be flying out of a helicopter. You might be a fish person on Andromeda. You might be a dog right? Crazy stuff can happen. And if that's what you need to heal, if that's where your energy is caught, if that's what you came here to heal in this lifetime, doing shamanic energy work cuts all the bullshit out of the way. It cuts all the randomness and chaos of the third dimension out of the way. It's you consciously doing your energy work. So crazy stuff can happen to you. If you've been living in a 30 year loop, you can go and release and shift and have just like you don't even need the psychedelics, you can have mind altering reality, changing healings, just if you're ready to heal and let it go and work through it. So they really taught us how to clear all your chakras. They taught us how to connect to the earth because the earth you have, if you're going to be doing healing, you need to open a safe space. You need to open a sacred space. You need to call upon the positive energies of the earth in the four directions and your guides. They teach you a lot about the different archetypes, the energies and connecting with the energies of Peru. So they talk a lot about like the jaguar, talk about the snake, the serpent. They talk about the hummingbird. They talk about the things that they have there. Peruvian shamanism really taught me. I was learning it from their perspective, but it helped me break into my own perspective because now you can have guides come in that can teach you something completely different. And that's where it's like, I don't try to say that, like, I'm a Peruvian shamanic energy healer. It's like, I'm just a Ryan. <laughs> like, I have yet, I have weird intuitions that I can't really explain to a normal person, but I do it in the energy healing and it just works. And I was never really taught it, but I just have like an unconscious knowing that I've been doing that for a long time or that I'm going to just move an entire ocean through somebody. And it's like, you couldn't explain it to them if I you can't be in the level at the mind while you're doing it. And since you're not at the level of the mind, since you're not putting yourself in the box that we think is real, you can shift anything. You can scream out a past life. You can do anything. That's awesome. That's well explained. And, and thank you for being, you know, humble and honest, you know, about, you know, your, um, not necessarily being trained in it. It's just like an intuitive thing. You know, I, I think a lot of people are that way as well when it comes to Reiki and all that. Mm -hmm. So talk so talk to us more about uh, communicating with your higher self. You know, when did you start that? Okay. And how did it feel? So I feel like as soon as I made the choice, not as soon as I made the choice to get out of the military, that was like my higher, that was like my awakening. That was the start, right? I didn't know I was consciously working with it. I didn't even know what I was working with. I thought it was God. I thought it was an angel. I thought it was eventually I just realized it's higher self. That's just what I call it. That's I read about it somewhere else and it resonated with me and I didn't know what it was, but I just higher self. Eventually I started meditating and one day I just saw eyes above me. So this is probably Three years after my first spiritual awakening, three years of really meditating, really being on my spiritual path, really working. And it was right before I got my moon I key rights. That's a another Peruvian shamanic thing. But this was before I had any of my Peruvian shamanic classes. This was just me meditating. I encountered it on my own with these eyeballs above me. And I was like shocked. I was like, what are these eyeballs? Are they something good? Are they something bad? But then I like really dove deeper and I like yawned while I was meditating. And when I yawned, I saw them even clearer and it was like bird's eyes. And I was like, wow, that's like cool, but like disturbing. So, but I just try to keep my mind clear because if you start right. thinking you crash your own field. Right. But I was trying to be focused and then I got like a name. I got like 
Akashan, Ajan, Ah. And I was like, I started like piecing together, like, oh my gosh, this is like my higher self talking to me. And then I like got like a picture and it was like, at first it looked like a cartoon, but then it actually looked like a real thing. And I saw like its face and its eyeballs. And I was like, okay, it's like projected an image of itself in my third eye. And that was the first time it was like blurry, but I could like see what I was working with. It was like a, like a bird, right? Later, like a week, no, I don't think it was, and time doesn't really matter. The second time I really saw it, it was like right before I was going to sleep. But I couldn't sleep. I was too excited to sleep. And that was weird. But I was laying there and I just saw it in my third eye, like super clear. It was just like a bird with a huge head and it was blue. And that was like, I haven't seen it since. But it was like, OK, it gave my mind just enough to hold on to and to, to focus it. After that, I started seeing like I started using angel numbers to communicate with it. Like I would realize I would think about something and then I would see a specific number like drive by me immediately. Or like it would I would get a specific thought as soon as there was an angel number like on the side of a building. And eventually it got to a point where it was like thinking, thinking, thinking like 848. There it is like. I connected with myself. It was like, hi, Orion. And then it's like 848. And it's like, oh, shit. And it's like, wait, what is 848? It's like, oh, I am. I am 848. And it's like, oh, I am I am Orion, but I'm also Akashan. I am multiple things. You know, I exist in multiple dimensions. And once you can feel that, you realize, like, there's a lot going on here that is subconscious there's a lot of things processing happening to us that a lot of stimuli that's getting experienced that we don't you know what i'm trying to say here but it it isn't like i'm not i'm not confused there isn't distraction you know what i'm saying there isn't I used to be like, what am I? What is me? What isn't me? Now it's like, okay, I have an understanding of what my higher self is. And if I hold myself in harmony with what my own energy is, then I can really start to work with myself on multiple levels. Instead of just running around in the third dimension, you can run around in a third dimension while part of yourself is in the fifth dimension with help from the sixth and seventh dimensions. And that'd be like the angels and the higher selves. Yeah, that's amazing. So do you believe that this third dimension is kind of like a, like you're saying, like it's like a karmic test to, so your soul can, can grow and learn. Do you believe at some point we pass this level and we, we don't come back here? We don't have to reincarnate. What do you think? So the universe is consciousness. The universe is experience. To understand what we really are here, you have to understand that the universe I am you, you are I, we are everything. The universe was itself, and then it multiplied into lots of different versions of itself. And it did that lots and lots and lots of times. Now we're at the point where the universe has gone into like unconsciousness, right? It's gone into the darkness that produces the perspective that creates emotion and love, duality. Our universe is coming back from a period of expansion. So we go through like expansion and contraction. So it is coming back from like a whole loop. We are the most advanced spiritual beings that exist in the universe. This isn't just a place of karma for us to learn its lessons. This is the universe exploring itself in the deepest depth it could possibly imagine you can see things from the perspective of i'm trapped here but it's not i'm trapped here it's this is just the level that i exist at if i existed above this i wouldn't be here if i existed above if i didn't if i wasn't wrapped into the temptation and out if i didn't need to learn that lesson i wouldn't be in this experience this serves further growth further down the line further for the next universe that we couldn't even imagine yet. <laughs>
I love that. I love that. So, so in your, uh, in your coaching and your healing practice, how do you guide others to also access and connect with their higher selves? What I do is I hold a vibration. I hold a frequency within myself of a high vibration. And if you're with me in a sacred space, we can consciously like resonate and harmonize at the same level. If you, it doesn't even have to be in the same room. When you work with someone, it's like quantum entanglement. That's how you can do remote distance healings. That's how you can do remote viewing. You can see across the planet. When you have the intention and someone else has the intention, it's not, I'm a coach and I'm healing this and I'm healing them. It's, I hold the key within my own lessons and my own experiences. I hold the frequency that I have earned through my own traumas and through healing them so if someone has a similar trauma they can just because i'm not going to catch i'm not going to trigger their trauma it's the exact opposite it is like seeing through it you know what i'm saying instead of being trapped in it you see through it i love that so you've also chosen the nomadic lifestyle um, so how has traveling across the country shaped your spiritual growth? Well, it's got me out of my hometown and just existing in a small town for my whole life. My consciousness was literally this big. I literally thought I knew everything and I literally didn't know. I was just recirculating <laughs> the same garbage that was all around me. Right. And getting out of there makes me realize that, first of all, the energy the energy of the earth is different wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Second of all, the energy of the place you live affects your life so much. So if mm -hmm. you live around a negative area, it couldn't even, it's not just the people there, but if that's mm -hmm. just, if there's negative heavy energy in the earth there, mm -hmm. it's going to yeah. affect all the things that happen there and all the people living there. So if your town, you, your hometown is literally a toxic hole, you just need to realize that toxic holes exist everywhere. Sometimes they come in towns. Sometimes they come in, People shapes, sometimes they come in the shapes of a corporation, sometimes they come in the shape of addiction or trauma. Just let it go. That's a part of the spiritual path is like avoiding the stink because it's like you can grow out of it, right? Like anger, something terrible could happen to you. You can get angry about it. Or you can realize like, I don't need to worry about this. And it's like, I don't need to worry about what people in my hometown, the, the junk they're talking, when I can be here in a different city making $1,000 a day, living my best life, not giving a single darn. So it really showed me that there is so much energy in the world and that the people that, the ants that are angry and that talk a lot of junk are just ants that talk junk that you don't got to worry about. You don't have to worry about. Yeah, I love that. You know, something about that nomad lifestyle is it's very tempting to me as well, man. Like, cause they say, you know, in America, man, it's like most people are living paycheck to paycheck, just one, one paycheck away from homelessness and shit. I've been, I've been stressing out sometimes if, you know, if my work pays me late and stuff. And, and then I get all stressed out about it. And I'm like, man, sometimes I just want to pack my things and just live <laughs> off, live off the land, you know? And what helps me is just like, you know, well, what am I going to do? Die? You know, if I can't pay my bills, what am exactly. I going to do? Am I going to die? No, like I'll figure something out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's uh, in Facebook Messenger, when we were messaging each other, you said you had a vision for a, a retreat center in Tucson. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about that. So I'm going to talk to you now about my own experience with psychedelics. So when I was an unconscious person, just starting. Oh, are we good? OK. Psychedelics is what opened my mind because on psychedelics was the very first time I ever saw an aura. I saw my own aura, and then I saw my friend's aura, and then I saw my friend's aura affect my aura. And that was the first time that I really realized, like, holy smokes, irrefutable proof, energy exists, and other people, we affect each other. Psychedelics is, like, something that if I didn't have that experience, like, sure, I could have had, like, a grace, I could have had an angel, something come in and, like, clear something and give me, like, a miraculous experience, but psychedelics did it for me just a natural plant medicine so i want to give other people that opportunity second of all psychedelics has helped me dive deeper into my spirituality the more that like i've gotten 
to know myself. And with psychedelics, it's helped me see that I can really like let go of all of this. Like I am this, but I'm also everything. And I don't have to hold on so fiercely to this. I don't have to be this so bad it hurts. I can just go with the flow. I can, like you say, I don't have to worry about money. And that's what I call like being in harmony with the universe. I know. I just know the money is going to come right on time. I just know it's going to work out. I literally don't have a single time to worry because I know everything. Synchronicity after synchronicity, it always works out. So I want to bring that someone in a space that is safe where they can understand. Hopefully I can explain to them some of the spiritual experiences and phenomena they're experiencing. And I also understand if they need specific energy work, I know how to do practices that can help them with their specific healing needs. And I know that by me setting out the intention to be a spiritual healer for the people that are seriously searching for spiritual healing, that the universe helps me create that opportunity and it helps attract the people that need that. So it's like, I already know by the time I get there, it's, we're going to be rolling, you know? It's but it's an optimism. You never know. It could be completely opposite. And you end yeah. up somewhere else too. You just know what go with the flow as much as you can until the flow goes somewhere else. That's awesome. Maybe when you guys head out this way, we can link up or something. Uh, Heck so, yeah. So I'd like Hopefully to ask, you make it there. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like to ask you, you know, what, uh, what psychedelics, what plant medicines have you been? Uh, so using? only, only magic. All right. So I'll say this magic mushrooms has been pretty much like 90% of what I've used, but I have used LSD I say LSD to me is gentler. To me, LSD is like fun, just calmly opening up your your experiences into higher dimensions, into higher frequencies. But magic mushrooms is like you're here to heal. <laughs> so uh, that's the differentiation. The magic mushrooms are a little bit rougher to me. But MDMA, uh, I took that when I was I haven't had that in years, but that was one of the first drugs I used. And that was just opened my heart. It was such a powerful psychedelic to me. It was like a psychedelic above LSD, above magic mushrooms. It just connected me with my infinite love. And I realized like taking that drug made me think I was gay because I was with my <laughs> friend and I was like, dude, I love you. Like, I really just appreciate <laughs> everything you do for me and always being there for me and like hanging out and teaching me. And it's like, you're just a really good dude. And I'm so grateful yeah. to have you in my life. And he was like, Orion, are you gay? And I was <laughs> like, am I? So that was, <laughs> I had to figure out that loving, you can love men and not be gay. Yeah. I don't know if that was, that was my own ego though. I was afraid that loving dudes made me gay, but that was just <laughs> them projecting that onto me because it's like, I can love Jesus. I can love Kali Ma. I can love Krishna. I can love my grand grandma, granddad. Anyone is not sexual. It's not charged. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's definitely part of, you know, the toxic masculinity as mm -hmm. men, as men, we don't like to show our emotions and we try to be cool and play things off. I had a similar experience where it was like, I was drunk and I, I told my homie, like, I, I loved him. I was like, dude, I love you. You're a good guy. You're my, you're my, you're my brother. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I, don't, I don't know if he took it the wrong way or what, but it was like, that's how guys are sometimes like, do we, and that's, that's what I talk about a lot on the podcast too, is like, men, we need to, we need to open up more to our feminine side. You know, we need mm -hmm. to, we need to show these emotions, you know, cause there's a lot of, I think suicide kills more men than women. And it's like, men are mm -hmm. just, they bottle in everything. They bottle in their emotions. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. That's one of the reasons I wanted to have a spiritual retreat is just, if I can be an example, if I can be a man that wears mascara, that's a little feminine that it's like you can stand in your feminine energy. You can be a goddess, right? We all are a god and a goddess. We all have divine feminine and masculine energies. The toxic masculine has messed up this planet for a long oh, time. Yeah. All oh, the yeah. civilizations before us, we are healing that just by expressing ourselves authentically from the heart, by loving each other without worrying, without having all this stereotypes or snags. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It really is healing just by being a positive influence.
Awesome. I love that. You know, and definitely we're entering that age of Aquarius and I could see women are becoming the leaders now. They're becoming so powerful. And so we're switching from that, that masculine, we're switching to the feminine. So mm -hmm. I'm excited, I'm excited and I'm hopeful for the future. Um, so I think this is a good place to kind of close it out here. So, um, you know, as you continue your journey, what are your goals for the future, both spiritually and professionally? I want to do some things that change the world. There are people on this planet that are experiencing hardship, that are experiencing junk that they can't really get out of, you know? And I don't want to be a rescuer. I can't go and rescue every single person. That's their experiences. But I can create a space for me to express myself. I can create a space for me to learn and to grow and to teach and to pass that forward. So it's like I can be a tree that supports those growing underneath me. And that's it. Give them what they can, what they need. And if they don't want to have anything to do with me, have a great time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's awesome. And I, and I know you, you've said on social media, you kind of want to be like a motivational speaker. You're a, you're a great communicator. So um, can you send the listeners out there just a final message of love and healing, especially for the ones who might be struggling out there? You are beautiful and amazing. You truly are perfect. You don't have to worry if you're about stress and you don't have to worry about your reality. You can literally just say, I'm exactly where I need to be. Everything is right on time. I'm perfect and I can smile. Because really, when you love yourself, the universe loves you too. Just invite that energy in and let everything that's not love, just let it go. That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Orion, for meeting with me today. Thank you for providing such great wisdom and insights on this episode. You did a great job. So I also want to thank the listeners for sticking around to the end. So Orion, please tell everyone how to find your information online. And I'll also add it to the description of the video. Uh, it's just Orion Alight. That's my TikTok. Orion Huntley. That's my Facebook. Sulfurized Healing. That's my website. That's pretty much it, man. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.